About two months ago, I uploaded my very first YouTube video, and I expected it to get maybe like a couple hundred views if I was lucky, but as of right now, it has over 16,000 views, and honestly, I probably just hit the YouTube algorithm jackpot because I've released a couple other videos, and well, they're not doing quite as good. But all the YouTube advice out there is like, just make something, it's gonna suck, you're gonna suck, it's okay, just just get out there. And yeah, that first video could definitely use some improvement. And looking back, my thoughts were definitely not as refined as I would have liked them to be. So I'm making this follow-up video to respond to a bunch of the comments that were left and to shamelessly try to take advantage of the YouTube algorithm to see if I can garner some more views. So first, there were a lot of comments about using Emacs and that I should just use Emacs. And my response to that is, Thanks, but no thanks. And I say that a little bit tongue in cheek because honestly, if I had started out with something like Doom Emacs and I've been using Doom Emacs at this point for as long as I've been using Vim, then then yeah, instead of making videos about NeoVim, I'd probably be going and finding all the videos on NeoVim and Vim and telling people in the comments that they should just use Emacs. But that's not what happened, so here we are. I just don't see myself moving to Emacs. Another thing people commented about a lot was Helix. And Helix, I'm actually pretty interested in that project and I'm curious where it'll go. But the last time that I went and looked at Helix and played around with it, it still did not have support for plugins, which is, a pretty big issue. I really don't want to get in the position where there's some feature that I really want or feel like I really need and can't have because there's no way to extend Helix or create a plugin to solve the problem that I have. So until Helix has support for plugins, that's kind of a no-go for me. But when I did play around with it, it was really nice that a lot of the things that I would just expect to be in an editor was just there. I didn't have to go write a bunch of configuration code, and dig through a ton of documentation, try to figure out what the difference was between LSP, LSP config, null LS, Mason, Mason config, NVim comp, or any of that other stuff. It, it just worked. And that was a really nice experience. So yeah, I don't know. I'll definitely be keeping an eye on Helix though. Another thing that people said in the comments, like this guy got straight to brass tacks, this video video feels like it had no point. And, and yeah, I, I could see why you'd say that. Hopefully this video will feel like it has a little bit more of a point. The point of this video will be to make the last video have a point. Yeah. I, I kind of was just complaining a lot. There's no point in denying it, but I think the overall gist of what I was trying to say is that NeoVim is such a, a powerful editor and I feel so much more productive using it. And honestly, it just makes coding like a lot more fun. But in order to have a stable editor with all the modern conveniences that you would expect in an editor, you can literally get into thousands of lines of code just to accomplish that. So just for example, I talked about how I use LunarVim and the main reason why I use LunarVim or have my config built on top of LunarVim is because of how much configuration it takes just to have what I would consider a pretty basic configuration. So I went and git cloned the LunarVim repository. And if we take a look at this, you can see that there's you know a couple files that don't really contribute to much like the readme and change log and whatever the main stuff is going to be inside lua and if i run this command line tool called clock which i just downloaded counts the number of physical lines of source code and comments in the given files and folders so yeah there's this elvim folder in here which contains a bunch of lua configuration files and if i do clock elvim we can see that within just lunar vim so this doesn't include my own configuration that I put on top of LunarVim. There's 6,271 lines of code and that's spread across 66 files. And honestly, I'm not entirely sure like what is all inside of here. I'm making a bunch of assumptions that everything inside this Elvim folder is completely necessary and it doesn't contain like test code or, you know, stuff like that. And if we look at just the stuff inside this core folder, clock Lua Elvim, core. So just inside the core folder, there's 3,793 lines of code. So that's, that's definitely, you know, not nothing. I feel like I've gone on a really big tangent and, and totally lost my train of thought. But basically my point, what I'm trying to say here is that NeoVim isn't VS Code. And I'm not trying to say that NeoVim should be like VS Code or anything like that. 
But what I am saying is there's no reason why you can't or shouldn't have modern conveniences inside your editor when using NeoVim. So just to dig into this whole like configuration thing and how NeoVim is honestly kind of a pain to configure, I went and built my own NeoVim config, which I'm running inside of a Docker container so I don't mess with anything else on my own system. And if I look inside NVim Lua user, I have what I would consider a pretty basic, I mean like very basic NeoVim configuration, except for LSP. So if I build this, and then I'll run it. There we go. So I created this little test project, just has a little bit of TypeScript code in it. It really doesn't do anything. It's just here for demonstration purposes. So what I'm used to is being able to do something like GD and that'll go to definition. And right now it just highlights dog, or if I did that over owner and highlight owner. So yeah, it uh, doesn't do anything. I don't have LSP or anything set up in here. If I do like owner.walk, pass in a string, I would expect my editor to say like, hey, you can't use a string in this function. So how would we get that working? So let's CD into this NVIM folder. Go inside of here and create an LSP.lua file. I'm gonna paste some code in here. And what I've done is I've just created this launch LSP function, which in Lua, if you create a function that starts with an uppercase character, like this capital L, then that'll become globally available to you. So I'll just pop back over to this test project that I have right here. Here we go. So I'm gonna do Lua, uh, shoot, what did I call it? Launch LSP. Oh, I forgot to require the file. Okay, here we go. Now Lua launch LSP and there we go. All right, so it worked that time, except I got an error saying that it tried to spawn the language server, but basically it couldn't find it. So we can solve this by not getting stuck there. Do an npm install dash g TypeScript language server. There, and then we'll try that again. Lua launch LSP and awesome. All right, so didn't get any errors. And now I should be able to say owner.walk dog, but I'll pass in a string this time. And awesome, I get an error. So LSP is now working, except, yeah, I can't do like owner dot and I have no IntelliSense here. I also don't have stuff like if I do a shift K. Oh shoot, I should have had Keycaster turned on. Okay. Anyways, where was I? I don't have any IntelliSense. That's really annoying. Like when I do, when I say dog dot, I wanna see what methods are available on the dog class, right? I also don't have shift K. Oh, just kidding, that did work. What about GD? All right, so GD, go to definition, still does not work. What else do I have? I also have like GR. I usually use that key binding to show me references to whatever thing I'm hovering over. So in order to get that stuff, that's like an entirely different animal, but let's let's do it. So I'm gonna create an LSP folder this time. And once again, I'm gonna paste some code in here. So there's two things that I'm gonna set up. One is Mason, and the other is comp or MVM comp or completions. And I'm also going to want to have some handlers so that when I call the setup function for LSP config, I can pass in the handler that I wanna use for the unattach function. So we'll start with Mason. And once again, I'm just gonna copy paste in a bunch of code. But here I have two things. I have Mason and there's also Mason LSP config. Then I'll just set those up. And this part right here is nice because, well, I don't know if it's nice, but instead of manually having to install the, like the TypeScript language server, I can just create a list of servers that I want to make sure are installed and add that here and then it'll install them. And I'll get rid of this just for some readability. The next thing that I'll do is come to this comp file and paste in a bunch of code. There's quite a bit more in here. And honestly, a lot of this stuff 
I don't totally know what it's doing. I honest, like I, I went to the GitHub page and I had all this code in there and I copy pasted it and, and threw it in here. I, I think I ended up making a, a couple changes. It's actually been a couple weeks since I wrote all this stuff and made this Docker image. I think I did something here with maybe icons, but anyway, it doesn't matter. But in here I have comp, I have comp nvim LSP and snip because I think snippets are part of what I would consider a minimal config. Then of course uh, the LSP config and you can't forget to have some icons to make sure that everything looks nice and pretty. And then I just call comp.setup, pass in all of this stuff. Oh yeah, cause you gotta make sure that like for instance, when you push tab that goes through the little menu that pops up. If you, you don't have this right here, then tab would not work. Same thing with shift tab. Like there's a lot of details you have to make sure you're not forgetting. And then this is some of the same stuff, but just for the command line. So like when I type Lua launch, whatever like that, that should pop up a little menu for me down here. This is where I call the LSP config and pass in a server and call the setup function so that the server knows what capabilities nvim comp is providing to LSP. That felt a little redundant, but moving on. Finally in handlers, this is where I'm going to add my own key bindings so that I have stuff like shift K and GD and GI, GR. And I know there's a couple of them because I'm going to copy paste them into this file now. And here they are. Oh yeah, diagnostics, signature help, definitely have rename in there, code actions, format on save, and these two. I don't know why those are in there. I, I never do that. I never use those. Anyways, with all that in place, calling these two functions should theoretically work. Let's see what happens. First, I need to get rid of Lua user lspe.lua, and then it should work. Famous last words. Oh yeah, duh, I forgot to add all the plugins that I need. Okay, so Lua user plugins, right. So I'm using lazy. So I need to add a bunch of plugins here so that, you know, it actually works. And thankfully I already had the list of plugins that I need. So just copy paste that in there. There we go. Okay, so now it's installing. If I go back in there, let's go to the test project. And now I should be able to do owner dot. And look at that. I have completions. If I pass in a dog that works. If I pass in a string, it yells at me. If I do dog dot something, then I have completions. If I come down here and do Lua line, well, that didn't, that didn't totally work, but I, I am getting this completions window. GD works, GR works. Now I can see all the places where dog is being referenced. And yeah, that's a, uh, I mean, it's not too shabby. And now I'm going to do the same thing with VS Code that I just did with NeoVim, which is to see what I have to do in order to get basic things like IntelliSense and a working language server. However, because I already have VS Code installed on my computer, I'm instead going to use VS Codium, which if we look at the docs here is same thing as VS Code, it just doesn't have Microsoft's telemetry built into it. So I already brew installed this on my Mac. So if I come over here, I can just do Codium and then open up my code folder that has the sample TypeScript project in it. Okay, and that opened up. But now I'm just gonna come in here and open up index.ts and here we are, if I do owner and right away I have IntelliSense. So I literally had to do nothing. Now let's try passing in a string. And there we go, I have an error right there. What about snippets? If I do try catch, I even have snippets. In order to get snippets in NeoVim, I had to install a plugin. The only thing that I would do right here is go ahead and install this uh, plugin right here so that I have some Vim key bindings. But other than that, the only thing that I had to do to get IntelliSense and a language server up and running is basically open the application. But it's just not quite the same as using Vim inside of a terminal. 
And in fact, I think it is so much better using NeoVim in the terminal, as well as I, I have Tmux set up so I can jump between my different terminals. I can open new terminals and split all my terminals and I can create a new window and jump between those two windows. I can also jump between different environments that I have set up. And yeah, VS Code, it, it just, yeah, I can't do that. Of course, saying that someone is gonna tell me in the comments that, yeah, you can do that but I don't care. I, I love this workflow is so buttery smooth and it just feels so good to just fly through code. And like, I, I can, I can really crank out some code when I, I need to. And a big part of that is just like knowing what I'm doing code wise, how to like program good. And, and in general, just, you know, I've really taken the time to master the language that I use, which is mostly TypeScript and JavaScript. But a huge part of that is that I've put in the time to become really effective with NeoVim and, and really understanding my editor. And I guess that's how I'll wrap up this video by saying that yes, VS Code has a lot going for it. I wish it didn't take me an hour to set up like ESLint or Prettier, where in VS Code, I can literally just go click some buttons, you know, like the install buttons on the extensions tab. And boy, would it be nice to have something like that within NeoVim, but yeah, it, it's not there yet. But regardless, even with all those drawbacks, I literally cannot see myself going back to using something like VS Code or IntelliJ. And it's also probably why I will never be a C-sharp developer, because I'm afraid that I would be forced to use Visual Code. There's not Visual Studio Code. What is Visual, what? Is it just called Visual Studio? I don't know, but I don't want to hand over my freedom and have Microsoft be making decisions about what editor I should be using. And consider giving this video a, a thumbs up if you found it informative or entertaining, or if you'd like to hear me talk more about some other NeoVim stuff, like my NeoVim config or how I use LunarVim or, or other related stuff. I'm not quite ready to niche down on a topic for this channel yet. I really enjoy teaching about technical topics, but I also have a lot of stuff I could talk about when it comes to Vim. Even though NeoVim has been around for a while and Vim has been around for who knows how long, it, it still almost feels like it's an early adopter sort of thing. So thanks for watching and I hope to see you in the next one. I literally cannot imagine myself going back to NeoVim not NeoVim, VS Code.